80 years. 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 As the oldest registered religious lobby in Washington, D.C., FCNL has faithfully lobbied Congress and numerous presidential administrations for 80 years. FCNL is composed of the Friends Committee on National Legislation, the FCNL Education Fund, and Friends Place on Capitol Hill. Together, these three Quaker, nonprofit, and nonpartisan groups form one of the most effective change agents in Washington working to advance peace, justice, and environmental stewardship through lobbying, education, civic engagement, and hospitality. We need to be brave enough to change. Anything that's constant about Quakerism, it's our needing to be open to continuing revelation. And that means being courageous enough to know that we need to continue changing and evolving and responding to the needs that the world has. Established by Quakers in Richmond, Indiana in 1943, FCNL began lobbying against military conscription and for aid to Europe during World War II. Since the beginning, our legislative policy has been rooted in the belief that there is that of God in every person. From defeating mandatory military training to helping to thaw relations with China, FCNL's first 30 years were marked by efforts to stop violent conflict around the world and address root causes by changing public policy through legislation. It's fair to say that what attracted me the most to Quakerism is a peace testimony. You can apply this knowledge to peaceful purposes. That's possible. FCNL has remained steadfast in its commitment to a more peaceful and just world from promoting laws that provided relief to Europe during and after World War II and playing a significant role in the creation of the Peace Corps in 1961 to preventing future wars. In the 70s, Ed Snyder led efforts to cancel the appropriations of $474 million to the South Vietnamese military, expediting an end to the U.S. war in Vietnam. And in the 80s, FCNL helped thaw relations with the Soviet Union and built congressional support for a series of international treaties to reduce the number of nuclear weapons and lessen the threat of war. In the 1990s, FCNL helped to ratify the UN Convention on Chemical Weapons and then advocated for the United States to adopt a code of conduct on arms transfers. However, no one knew then how much the 9-11 terrorist attacks would catalyze a pivotal shift in U.S. foreign policy and mark an important point in FCNL history. Right away, the staff went to work on what's the United States going to do and what can we say about this now? The one we kept coming back to was war is not the answer. Repealing the authorization for the use of military force clearly was central to the work that FCNL has done. And working with Congressman Barbara Lee was really rewarding. And it was rewarding to work with that office, her office, and her also to see how relationships with other members of Congress developed and also how FCNL Advocacy Network cultivated and instructed and helped those members of Congress understand why it was in the benefit of our country to repeal that authorization of use of military force and how it was really good governance for Congress to take back the authorization. In March of 2023, the Senate voted to repeal the 2002 authorization for use of military force against Iraq, a historic moment for FCNL advocates nationwide. We think what we're going through right now is bad. It is, but 
it has been bad in other times too. And in just contemporary history, it has been bad with World War I. It has been bad with a global depression. It has been bad with World War II and then the Cold War and then in the United States in the 50s. But we keep going and we keep making positive change. FCNL carries a persistent, prophetic, and powerful commitment toward our vision of the world we seek. The wonderful thing about this poem is that it is a statement of, of mission that concisely shows the intersection of all these different important issues uh, that not only friends care about, but people everywhere in the world care deeply. We seek a world free of war and the threat of war. We seek a society with equity and justice for all. We seek community where every person's potential can be fulfilled. We seek an earth restored. In the 1960s, FCNL's lobbying approach and geographic location positioned it amid some of the most pivotal demonstrations of recent history. From the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom and the Poor People's Campaign in Resurrection City to multiple demonstrations against the Vietnam War, FCNL regularly hosted visiting friends, planned seminars, and supported leaders in the civil rights and anti-war movements. In partnership with what was then known as William Penn House, we expanded our connection to and engagement with organizers, providing meals and showers, and helping to strategize effective advocacy tactics during some of the most heightened times our country has faced. We say, love thy neighbor, no exceptions. And um, when you are situated as we are, so close to the Capitol, so close to Union Station, and you have 40 bunk beds, and that's what you say your values are, that's really um, when you have to put those into practice. So. As of, of now, we've welcomed 619 migrants into our space in that first year since busing began. And that has been uh, really a, a wonderful way for us to show that, that we mean it when we say we love our neighbors. And migration is a, a policy issue that, that FCNL is dedicated to. The, the welcome has been, um, as one of our guests put it, a divine welcome. And that's something we're really committed to. FCNL seeks to help build a world in which there is equity and justice for all and a community in which each individual's potential can be fulfilled. That is only possible if we are able to move toward a more just society. The work that I do in community, like in seeing how people stick at this, knowing that maybe um, everything which we seek might not happen in our lifetime, but we are helping to build the blocks because we are undoing centuries of oppression. So it's not something that can be done overnight, but there are always signs of progress. The work that we do with Native Americans, to me, is reflective of excellent solidarity and allyship in the ways that our a Jedi statement calls us to, that it is in genuine partnership with indigenous communities. It began as a partnership between yearly meetings and indigenous communities and has evolved over the years, but that core co-creation is still at the heart of it. In our a Jedi work broadly, we talk about nothing about us without us, and we try to live into that with our Native American advocacy work. FCNL's voice is unique because when we talk about the, uh, seeking an earth restored, working on climate is really at the heart of what drives Quaker values. Um, it's at the heart of, 
uh, seeking justice, whether it's economic justice, social justice, or environmental justice. All of those things come together with uh, the voice that FCNL brings to Capitol Hill. We see climate change really being a global concern, interwining so many, so many other issues, including migration and peace building. Uh, but we haven't seen a, a lot of movement in that space uh, on the Hill. And so having climate being sort of interwined in, in this legislation that we're trying to push forward, I think it's really important. Our vision is huge and we have a place for 80 more years and beyond. And we also have the people on board already that are part of that stream of our work that are gonna help us get there. And we're building the plan for the next 80 years, you know, to bring on the next group of people that are gonna help carry that forward. I think that one of the main things that FCNL offers is personal transformation through democratic participation. And I have lived that experience. FCNL provides channels into policy and advocacy in a couple of really important ways. Um, I think one is demystifying the political process, which has become really complicated over time, especially with you know interest groups and, and the influence of money in politics. I think FCNL does a good job of, of helping people see that ordinary people, you know, you don't have to have specialized knowledge or a fancy degree or experience in order to be able to go on a lobby visit and making it feel possible for people, especially now that many members are doing virtual visits as well. That has made lobbying much more accessible to more people. And, and I think FCNL helps people feel that they can do this. The Young Adult Program, I believe, challenges this notion that young adults are leaders of the future, that we are training young adults to be leaders tomorrow, they are leaders today. And our young adult program constantly proves that we are working with leaders that are making change right now with the skills they have right now and the experiences that they have. Who we are in the world as a Quaker organization is evolving as it should. We are becoming a more diverse and inclusive community. We're becoming that beloved community that we try to seek in the world and try to build in the world. And that helps us become more Quaker. It helps us live our Quaker values and become the community that we want to be. Since the start, FCNL has helped individuals find their advocacy voice. Young adults are no exception. Year after year, and in cities and towns across the country, we are helping young people cement their place in the democratic process. The skills they learn through opportunities as program assistants, spring lobby weekend attendees, advocacy core organizers, and interns with FCNL will enrich their civic journeys and take them through the rest of their lives. FCNL's lobbying has connected Quaker testimonies on peace equality, simplicity, and integrity with issues and legislation in Washington, D.C. The FCNL community brings together friends and tens of thousands of like-minded individuals sharing a belief in relationship-based change-making to advance the world we seek one lobby visit at a time. So uh, my experience is you really have to truthfully express what you see, what light has been given to you. And if you do it in a way that is sincere, you can continue the conversation and reach a positive point. You may not know where that positive point is, but it will emerge at some time.